greet you this morning in the precious and almighty name of Jesus. For he is the Lord and greatly to be praised. For he is our present and our future. And we are yet looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. We thank God for extending to us with love and care another day on this side of the grave. But we thank God today for once again donating his grace and his mercy to all of us who are yet numbered among the living. What's now being reported that infections and deaths caused by COVID-19 has tremendously started to decrease. Heaven has finally honored the fervent petitions of the saints, and we are now drawing closer to the long-awaited light at the end of the tunnel. The CDC, along with many other others, are appealing to all of those who have not been vaccinated to please get vaccinated. The pending danger of this COVID-19 and these variances has not completely disappeared. For we are in the midst of some very unpredictable times and we need to pray fervently and consistently for a complete deliverance. Let us continue to be mindful of our men's day drive and, and let us continue to be supportive of our church prayerfully and financially as best as we can. Every head be bowed at this hour and every eye be closed. Our God and our Father, we come before your majestic throne of grace in the name of Jesus. We come, Lord God, asking that thou would forgive us of our sins, our transgressions, our iniquities. We come, Lord God, uh, asking that thou would uh, continue to bless us, Lord, as we persevere, Lord, through this uh, COVID-19 and these other variances. We thank you for what you've already done. We thank you, Lord God, to know that there has been a, a decrease in uh, infections and deaths. And we realize, Lord God, that there's been some reopenings, and we know, merciful Father, that you are God who's able to, to, to allow the storm to pass over. So we just ask now, Lord, that you would just continue to bless us, not only in this country, but bless all over the world with deliverance, if it is thine holy and righteous will. Look on me now, Lord, as I stand, asking that thou would look on uh, what I have to share with your people. I realize, Lord God, that you are God who is able, merciful Father, to bless us with your word, from your word. And we know, merciful Father, that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So, Lord, we just ask that you would just bless. I pray, merciful Father, that you would... Uh, Lift me out of myself, Lord God. Fill me full of yourself. I pray that you enable me to declare your truth between the living and the dead. Bless and keep us, I do pray in Jesus Christ's name and for his precious sake. All God's people said amen and amen. Those of you who have your, 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 your Bibles, turn with me to Psalms, the 100 division of Psalms, an old familiar uh, Psalm, the 100 division of Psalm, we want to look at just one verse of the 100 division of Psalm, and that's verse 4. Verse 4 of the 100, and division, 100 division of Psalms, where you will find these words, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. I said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. This scripture is, has reference to praying and it also has reference to 
praising. So we want to use for a title, Fervent Praying and Joyous Praising. Fervent Praying and Joyous Praising. Pray with me, if you will. It is true, my beloved, I said that it is true that how you conduct yourself in everyday life is critical. Yes, it is. It's critical. Your approach is very important if you desire positive results. This is true in your jobs. This is true in your church. This is true with your neighbors and even with family members. And it is also true in your prayer life. For if you desire, if you desire, if you desire what heaven can do for you through prayer, then heaven has certain protocols you must follow. Yes, it's mighty important, my beloved, it's mighty important uh, how we approach God's throne of grace. For yes, I'm quite sure you will agree with me when, when I speak of prayer as a want list. When I speak of prayer as a want list, I call it the Christian's habit of giving. Give me this and give me that. Of course, who better to ask for what you need than the one who created everything that you have need of? For, you see, Psalms 50 and 10 says, God owns the cattle upon a thousand hills. So the question is, what could be wrong with asking him for one or two from the herd? Yes, yes, the response is, nothing is wrong with you re requesting of what you desire from the Lord. For he is indeed a supplier of our every need. But you see, oftentimes, my beloved, oftentimes, it's not what we ask for that's the problem. But rather, it's how we ask for it. First of all, when petitioning heaven, there should be adoration and reverence extended to a God who is more than worthy. Which is our first point. For there is, for there is a certain way to approach the one who holds all power in his hands. Yeah, we must, we must start by reminding ourselves that, uh, uh, that he is our creator. We must start by reminding ourselves that he is our sustainer. It shows our respect to a God who is do all the respect that we could ever give. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, now, now that word hallowed means holy. That word hallowed means sanctified, revered, respected, and highly honored. You get the point. For, for, for your spirit should feel a sense of wonder, should feel a sense of awe as we approach the Lord in prayer. For you see, prayer is not about technique. It's not about filling out an application before you pray, but rather it's about displaying a genuine self-effacing humility in the presence of our Creator. For you see, my beloved, your adoration and reverence for God should publicize to the world your loyalty and devotion to a God who holds every blessing bestowed upon us in his almighty hands. But it is ironic. It is, it is, it is ironic and greatly dis astonishing to know how some believers urgently expect God to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing when they haven't even confessed of their sins. But not only that, but some haven't even submitted to the will of God or followed the way of God, or done the work of God, or even listened to the wisdom of God, but yet they expect to avoid the chastisement of God. 
Also, they expect a right now answer to their prayers. Yes, they are counting on God to, to bless them with an answer. But they want God to do his part, even though they have failed to perform theirs. David wrote, David in the Bible, David wrote in Psalms 89 and 7, he said, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. Now, now, now another version of this same scripture says, God is a God feared in the counsel of the Holy One who is great and terrible above all that all round and about him. Now, 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 my beloved, uh, that part that says all that are round and about him, that's you and me. That allows, that, that alludes to our intimate relationship with God. Yes, we do have an intimate relationship with God. If you're saved, if the Holy Spirit indwells you, you do have an intimate relationship with God. For God indwells us with his Holy Spirit. So therefore, when we approach the Lord in prayer, we should do so with the greatest of reverence because he reigns over us. He indwells within us with tender, loving care. And it should be so that we adopt, if we haven't already, should be so that we adopt, if we haven't already, a respectful and loving fear of him, not as some evil ruler bent on destroying us, but as the God who uses his rod of love, his rod of patience and correction to navigate us through life in the same way that a shepherd watches over and herds his sheep. Yes, yes, my beloved, when we pray, the Lord is searching our hearts for a right relationship. He's searching our hearts for a right relationship. But if you are a sure enough born again believer who have been baptized in the blood of Jesus Christ, then you should certainly be filled with an awesome wonder and reverence as you approach God's majestic throne of grace. Secondly, secondly, offering thanksgiving is exceedingly necessary. It's been said that when you say thank you, that makes room for more. That makes room for another favor. That makes room for another blessing. For you see, saying thank you to God is the least. It's the very least we should do. All of what he has done done for us. But we should always approach God's throne with thanksgiving in our hearts. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 testifies and commands that we are to give thanks in all things for this is the will of God through Christ Jesus. But how sad to know, how sad to know that there are people in this world today who feel that they themselves are the ones responsible for the food they eat and the water that they drink, the employment that they have, the wages they are paid, social security and pension funds that they receive, the car they drive, the clothes they wear, and, and even the shelter that covers them in a time of storm, and so on and so on and so on. But James 1.17 begs to disagree with all of those who feel as though they themselves are the ones responsible but what they have or possess in this earthly life. James said, every good and every perfect gift, every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father. I'll run that by you again. I said, James said, every good and every perfect gift <clears throat> is from above and cometh down from the Father. So therefore, so therefore, my beloved, the blessings we have received from the early rocking of our cradle up until this present time are blessings that have come down from the Father. Yes, everything we have 
and everything we have had and everything that we will ever will have coming down from the Father. Well, you see, life is more than a blessing. It is also a divine privilege expressed by God from the lofty heights of heaven. Yes, we even live, move, and have our being in the Lord. Because he is good. But the psalmist says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for his good and his mercy endureth forever. But as we look, but as we look yet further, we find that the text says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Now we can always consider the church door as our gate to enter his house to give him thanks. But now if the church doors are not swinging open to us right now, there are other doors that are available to us, such as our closet door or our bathroom door or any place where you humbly approach God's throne. But now when giving thanks, when giving thanks, you must make sure that the door to your own heart remains unlocked to your faith in God. Prayer is no good without faith to accompany it. Yes, yes, for God is simply searching for that thankful and believing heart that acknowledges him as the God of all power. According to Psalm 77 and 14, he is the God that doeth wonders. Well, I'm quite sure, I'm quite sure you, you will agree with me that there are many difficult things that God has done for us. And in some cases, we don't even understand, nor can we explain how he did it. Huh? For to us, it should be not only a wonder, but it should also be viewed as a miracle. Some folk may feel that since Jesus completed his evangelistic ministry and ascended back into heaven, there has been no more miracles performed. But I beg to disagree because the Holy Spirit, the comforter of the triune God, is performing miracles in somebody's life every day. Yes, every day. Now, now, as we venture yet further, my third point, my third and final point is the offering of praise. <clears throat> the offering of praise. For you see, there is a difference between thanksgiving and praise. Huh? Let me run that by again. I said there's a difference between thanksgiving and praise. Thanksgiving is what you appreciate in your heart. And praise is how you demonstrate it. For you see, you can have a grateful heart and, and, and still fail to take advantage of the opportunity to praise God verbally and publicly for how he has blessed you. For you see, some Christians, while in service, have more of a sit-on-hands kind of religion. But you see, the text says, enter into his courts with praise. Well, you see, praise is an action word. Oh, yes, it is. For well, if you want a perfect example of how we should praise God, just turn to Psalms and observe how David praised his creator. For David declared that his lips and his hands to be an active part of his praise to God. In Psalm 63, 3 and 4, David says, Because thy love and kindness is better than life, I will lift up my hands to thy name, and I will praise thee with my lips. Some saints may be thoroughly satisfied with praising God just once on Sunday. That's all. Just once on Sunday. But in Psalms 119, uh, at 164, the psalmist said, Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. 
Therefore, the question is asked, when in the service of the Lord, when you are in the service of, are you one who can be found and heard in the amen corner? Or are you one who feels just fine remaining as a totally silent worshiper? Do you prefer quiet meditation over verbal exaltation? But you see, whether we realize it or not, Jesus Oh, yes, he did. Jesus has given us bragging rights. Yes, yes, if you can brag on something you did that was successful, if you can brag on a child that you have helped bring into this world, if you can brag on anything else that you were successful in, it ought to be so that you can brag on Jesus. Yes, Jesus wants us to brag on him. Yes, he does. He wants us to brag on him for what he has done for us, for what he is still doing for us. And what he will continue to do for us. Jesus desires for us to brag on him in spite of our situation. Whether you realize it or not. If you never give it any thought, you need to give it some thought. But we have much more to praise him about than we have to weep over. We have much more to shout about than we do to pout about. Sure, sure, sure. I realize that you may be exhausted in your body or confused regarding some recent event or troubled over some disheartening news or greatly depressed because of a broken relationship or even burdened down with some because of some financial need. But there is still reason to praise God. There is still room enough in your heart. There should be still room enough in your heart to praise God. Yes, we ought to praise him over the fact that he hears us when we pray, and that he sees us when we suffer, and that he inspires us when we are discouraged, and that he lifts us up should we ever fall. But most of all, we should praise him. Oh, we should praise him because he went to Calvary, not for himself, but for a world of lost sinners. Oh yes, for at Calvary Jesus Christ became the Immaculate Lamb of God who paid a debt that nobody else could ever pay. For at Calvary he lifted the indictment of hell's eternal death sentence from our souls. At Calvary, at Calvary he shed his blood which was far superior to any sacrificial blood that's ever been shed. At Calvary he died the greatest death out of all of the deaths that has ever occurred. For it was on Calvary cross that he died the greatest death. Oh yes, the songwriter felt a need to write about it. Oh yes, he said, at last and did my Savior bleed. And did and did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the balance of my heart rolled away. Yes, it was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. Oh yes, Jesus died in order that we might live. He died. Oh yes, he did. He died. He took him down and laid him in a borrowed tomb. Oh yes, it was borrowed. Yes, indeed. It was, it was borrowed just for the weekend. Oh yes, but on the third day morning he got up with all power in his hands. Power to save us, power to heal us, power to set us free. There may be somebody in my listening audience that don't know Jesus, but I would have you to know that time is running out. Oh yes, time is running out in all of our lives. Time ain't as long as it has been. Jesus is soon to come. We're living in the last days. Oh yes, oh yes, signs of the last days are all around us, Lord. We're all around us. You don't know Jesus, you need to accept him while you still have breath in your body, while you still have the blood running warm in your veins. Oh yes, oh yes, he'll save your soul. He'll make you whole. He'll write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank God. Let's give the Lord some hand praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise his name.